Hey there, friends. Welcome back to another Legally Armed America video. I'm, of course, Paul Glasgow here, the one and only Truth Pimp, dealing with vulgar display of logic and reason on a daily basis. Guys, you know I like to take deep dives into crazy stuff. Um, not just things that might be looked at as being controversial, but things that not a lot of us see or hear about, things that fly under the radar. Things that, in many cases, I don't think people want us to know about. Today, we're going to talk about Bill Gates and his genetically modified mosquitoes. First guys, please go check out my friends CMMG. They have a brand new line of zeroed brand suppressors that they are releasing. These suppressors offer impressive sound suppression. They're very ruggedly built and trust me, they are at a very affordable price. They're calling these the every man suppressor, meaning that they are at a price point where they expect most everybody, every man at least, <laughs> if you still know what men are, to be able to afford one. These suppressors are built in-house, in America, in Missouri, at the CMMG plant. They're made with 17-4 stainless steel, and they feature a durable tubeless design, laser-welded baffle stacks, and easy-to-clean nitride finish. Check them out. Go to cmmg.com. Again, cmmg.com. Don't forget to use my code FTATF, and you will get 10% off these unbelievable suppressors, along with anything else from CMMG. Again, FTATF is the discount code. Yeah, friends, today we're going to talk about Bill Gates and his weird push for genetically modified mosquitoes to somehow get rid of malaria. Today I'm going to take a deeper look at the facts and power dynamics, revealing a pattern of reckless experimentation from Bill Gates, as usual. Uh, definitely some deep-seated mistrust as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this guy is doing things to me that is going to continue to fuel speculation and suspicion of modern depopulation agendas that he's had as far as on his mind for a very long time. Yeah, this guy has long said that we have too many people on the planet and that we need to work towards depopulation. So when you hear him say out of the other side of his mouth that, oh, this vaccine saves countless lives, you have to know that he's lying. I mean, which side is he lying about? Is he lying that we, he thinks we have too many people on planet Earth or is he lying that he's trying to save lives? Because the both of them can't be possible at the same time. You have to be misleading or being diabolical or, or deceitful doing one of those because they can't coexist. About 10 years ago, the African country of Djibouti nearly succeeded in wiping out malaria. Then suddenly the disease roared back. Cases soared from 27 in 2012 to more than 73,000 in 2020. That's a lot of cases for a country of only one million people. It was all because of this little pest, a highly invasive mosquito from South Asia. This mosquito is one of the biggest threats in the effort to eliminate malaria because it's resistant to most insecticides and it thrives in urban areas. We were hoping to have no more malaria and to be opening to the tourism, to investment, and having this spike was just a nightmare. The biggest we, we ever seen in, in Djibouti. Anopheles tefasai is the name of the new vector, and it was having completely different habit than the, the ones we used to have in Djibouti. This one adapted to the urban, living outside, biting outside, and he's adapting faster than us. Gates has spoken publicly about the need to control population growth, linking health interventions to reductions in birth rates, especially, here we go, in impoverished regions. Now I'm going to get more into that in a minute, but yeah. He knows that there are regulations in place in first world countries, so he goes to third world countries where he can grease the palms and pay people off so that he can do whatever he wants with actual human beings, like experimenting with them. To people like me, his advocacy for high-tech biotechnologies is, well, it's genetically engineering mosquitoes and mass vaccination programs. Th that sounds like a very slippery slope to allow somebody like Bill Gates to experiment with actual people using nature as a, let's just call it a vessel. Look, when you engineer something in nature, like a mosquito, like what he's doing. You can't unengineer that. You can't put out a recall. I want all my mosquitoes back. Can you send all my mosquitoes? No. Once you genetically modify these mosquitoes and you release them out into the wild, they're gone. 
They're eaten by other things in the ecosystem. Uh, they're biting humans. They're biting other animals. You can't say, whoops, I got that one wrong. I'm going to go ahead and pull all those mosquitoes back. No, they're gone forever. You have created something that you don't know what effect you're having on the ecosystem. Now, quick side note, I do believe, and there's there's many species of mosquitoes. I think there's 3,000 3, different uh, species of mosquitoes. Each one would have to be genetically modified. You can't genetically modify one of the species and it affects all other 3,500 or 3,000 species of mosquitoes. So he's going to be affecting one species unless he's genetically modifying more than one. And all that I know right now is he's genetically modifying one. I don't see one species being enough that completely tips upside down the ecosystem in Africa. But we also don't know that it won't do that. I mean, it's all speculation at this point because... Basically, you got somebody playing God. And I don't think that's an area that we should let some kind of a technology guy, a software guy. I don't believe this is his wheelhouse, if you ask me. Why are we letting him do this, which, again, is also affecting people that he experiments on over there? Many critics are arguing that by pushing for the eradication of genetic sterilization of entire mosquito species, like Gates is actually doing... He and his allies are effectively experimenting with ecosystem-wide population control. This type of technology, especially gene drive modification, which is what he's doing, it's designed to spread infertility or lethal genes through mosquito populations at breakneck speed, a concept that, if applied or repurposed, could theoretically be used as a bioweapon or for targeted depopulation. Yeah, don't think for a minute that the window dressing on this is all that they're trying to do. Seriously, don't think for a minute that this is what this guy's trying to do. This guy is on record multiple places and never denied the fact that he favors depopulation. Yet we're going to take the fact that, oh, he's got another hobby. This one is getting rid of malaria. And oh, by the way, we're going to um, genetically modify mosquitoes, which can go out and bite millions of people at a time. Oh, but we're not going to use that for depopulation. <laughs> We're only going to use that to, to eradicate malaria. Yeah, we have other plans for depopulation. We're not about to use our genetically modified mosquitoes. A select amount of people would have the control over what Gates is trying to do here. Again, as I stated earlier, once released, these modified mosquitoes cannot be recalled. I mean, there's unintended uh, mutations, cross-species contamination, or again, the outright weaponization of this. This is a process that can be certainly manipulated and used, especially in the wrong hands. I mean, if a state or a non-state actor were to deliberately engineer a gene drive, which is what Gates is doing, to target food sources or even carry pathogens of some sort to destroy those food sources or to harm the people, it could definitely lead to ecological collapse or deliberate population crises in regions where people are at war. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked to see this get introduced as a uh, bioterror thing and see terrorists start to utilize this in order to harm other areas. Don't be surprised if you see something like this pop up with the Chinese. Don't be surprised if you see something like this pop up in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. I mean, this is a very slippery slope when we start be becoming successful at genetically modifying things that the average person, when they see it, you're not going to freak out and panic. But that mosquito that's coming right towards you that you're thinking, I'll just swat it when he gets on my arm, that thing could be carrying some kind of weird pathogen that's going to wipe you and your family out. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but maybe eventually. I don't think this is the kind of thing that we need to be putting in and allowing a person like a Bill Gates, again, a known depopulation person, to have full control over. As one scientific review notes, gene drives are, quote, especially controversial because of their potentially irreversible nature, unquote. The changes can sweep through entire species, continents, or interbreeding populations with unknown and uncontrollable consequences. I mean, even without malicious intent, mistakes are definitely going to happen. And I mean, these are un unforeseen mistakes. Some things that we're probably not even thinking of might take place, could definitely result in new ecological crises, devastating declines in non-target species. I mean, there you have to figure, once you get into cross-species contamination, it's a species that might actually be helping us in some way. I know that sounds weird for a mosquito, but maybe it is. And we wipe that one out. So the unknowns as far as our ecosystem are the, just that. They're unknowns. 
I mean, let's think of it in this term too. You could jeopardize everything from pollinators like bees and whatnot to birds and fish. Certainly a lot of things further up the food chain. So how does this work? I'm going to do my best to simplify this because this is a really, really wild process. Uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can modify a mosquito to combat malaria outbreaks and um, things that carry, like mosquitoes that might carry malaria. Male mosquitoes, which don't bite, are released carrying these modifications, and as they mate with wild females, the female offspring cannot survive or reproduce, leading to a rapid drop in mosquito population. So essentially, the species will die off because it can't reproduce. It can reproduce offspring, but the offspring will eventually die off and can't reproduce themselves. So it's kind of a second generation die off of the species is what would happen. The other way is making mosquitoes resistant to malaria. Scientists use a CRISPR Cas9 gene editing to alter species genes in the malaria vector mosquitoes, such as Anopheles species. One example is replacing an amino acid protein which is critical for parasite development. This single change prevents malaria parasites from traveling to mosquitoes' salivary glands, making them unable to transmit the disease when biting a human. And another technique engineers mosquitoes to produce anti-parasitic compounds in their gut, stunning parasite growth so it can't be tr transmitted to humans either. So the process that Gates is using is the gene drive technique, and that's the one where basically they're, and again, I'm oversimplifying, but they will pass on a gene that will eventually make the species die out because they are not able to reproduce uh, consistently. Eventually their offspring will not be able to reproduce, therefore the species itself will start to be eliminated. That's the fear. There's two things that happen there. One, again, like we discussed earlier, you got birds and fish who are eating these manipulated offspring that are dying and passing away or just being hunted and killed in the general public, birds and fish of course. But then you have these other offspring that can't reproduce, so they just simply die out. Well, I mean, I know you can take really good guesses, but is that species one that is a vital part of a certain ecosystem somewhere? What if you're in a drought situation and this type of mosquito is the only thing out there that's a food source for certain things? So does that other species of fish or bird die off because its food source died off prior to that? I mean, it's a slippery slope. Now, researchers are testing a different type of gene drive technology. It's a, a phantom gene drive where the gene itself eventually dies off in the species without killing off the entire species. But that, that research is not complete on that. They haven't formalized it. And, and again, we're playing God here. I mean, we're, we're hoping that their hunch is correct that the gene drive dies off but we don't know until we release them off into the wild. You're experimenting with live ammo if you, if you catch my drift. I mean, it, you have to release them and let them be and let them go out into the wild to see if they're going to do their thing. Again, you don't recall those. If something goes wildly wrong, you can't pull those guys back in. In closing, guys, I have a real problem with anyone trying to play God, but especially someone who has made it clear that there's too many people on planet Earth. The guy's got a motive. Bill Gates has got a motive. He has talked poorly of JFK. He's not impressed with Trump's pick for health secretary, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. These vaccines are saving millions of lives. You know, he is, is misleading people about that. Everything JFK has done has been to make America more healthy. And Bill Gates has never stopped at saying ugly things about JFK Jr. Or FK Jr., sorry. So it's sad that we have a guy that has the ear of the president just because he's a rich man and can talk these things to Trump. I hope that Trump is not foolish enough to allow this man to do anything like this um, in the United States because the fact that he's experimenting on people and in areas that have direct contact with people in Africa, it would be a lot easier if he could do it in the United States. But to our knowledge, he's not because he can't get away with that. But he can go to Africa, these third world countries, buy off the leadership there and do whatever he wants that's gonna directly impact that local population. Doesn't matter because the president or prime minister or whomever of those little crappy countries, they get paid, they get a little gold in their little castle and all that, and they're happy. They don't care about the people that are getting bit, not getting bit. 
getting malaria, not getting malaria, because they got theirs. They got their cheese. So that's all they care about. That's why Gates is doing it in Africa. Not because he likes the atmosphere. I can promise you that. At its core, this Gates mosquito saga is much less about public health than it is about who gets to decide the fate of an entire population and their ecosystem. Don't forget guys, if you're looking for a book to educate yourself and to educate the idiots out there who can't think for themselves regarding mass shootings, go to damnliars.net. Again, damnliars.net and get my brand new book, Damn Liars. I'm sorry, I thought this was America.